Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of our Midnight Madness series. My name is Kara Morin, and I am on the customer success team here at Postscript. And today I have the absolute pleasure of sitting down with one of my favorite brands and merchants that I get to work with at Postscript Graza. I have two people who work on the Graza team for SMS here with me today. Callie, who is on the senior marketing manager side at Graza, along with Rose, who is their agency partner at Fat Earth Media, and she is a senior manager for retention marketing. I know that Callie and Rose have worked together to come up with a ton of truly engaging creative strategy ideas for Graza that stand out in inboxes everywhere. I would say, honestly, of all the brands that I work with here at Postscript, Graza is definitely the number one brand I get asked about by my fellow colleagues. So I'm super excited to dig in and see how they do it and how you can add some creative engagement to your own brand. However, before we start, just a quick reminder, we are actually giving away um, 10 swag items to attendees here in the chat. So they're being chosen at random right now. Check the chat for your for the winners in the next couple minutes. We will reach out to all of you guys via email after the webinar and grab details so we can send those out. I know that swag is a hot commodity here at Postscript, so I'm super excited for the 10 of you. Um, but let's get started. Kelly, I'd love to start with you first. Can you share a little bit about how SMS marketing first became known to you? Was it at Graza or previous role? And how did you initially approach SMS? Yeah, of course. First of all, hi. Big thanks to the Postscript team. Thanks so much for having us. We're super excited to be here today. Um, I have known about SMS marketing for a while, but only started using SMS as a marketing channel since joining Graza earlier this year. Um, prior to Graza, I was working in the tech space for companies whose like product and brand didn't necessarily warrant an SMS marketing strategy, um, but that is obviously not the case for a company like Graza. So I was really excited to see that Graza was already using SMS when I joined and really excited for the opportunity to help grow and evolve our strategy. Um, as a consumer, I have interacted with a lot of brands who use SMS, so I took a lot of inspo um, and ideas from those experiences into the way that I began to approach using SMS at Graza, which I think was really with a mindset of openness and experimentation. Um, so I started my career uh, working in social media at the mattress company Casper, and one of the things that I loved most about my job was getting to interact in such a unique way with people on the internet as this really like quirky, personified version of the brand, which was essentially a talking mattress. Um, and whether I was crafting a tweet, uh, which I guess RIP now, uh, or responding to an Instagram comment, I just found so much joy in really being able to have such direct conversations with our customers. And I think that concept of brands being open and authentic and at times a little bit weird or maybe even really weird if you're a brand like Graza um, is, is what inspired my approach to SMS here. So I think that SMS as a channel obviously really helps facilitate that. Um, so it's it's awesome to, to really see it evolve as a channel in a way that brands feel this power to get a little bit weird and be their most authentic selves and have these very direct conversations with consumers. Kelly, that's so great. I know Graza has such a weird, as you called it, an engaging personality. Brands put so much work into creating brand personas and then often lose them over SMS. So you guys have done such a good job there. Rose, I'm curious for you, though, I know we've worked together, not just across Graza, but multiple clients, and you've been doing this for a long time. How has your approach changed over the course of your career running SMS for multiple brands? What, what did that look like when you first started doing SMS? And how has Graza maybe shaped that approach now? Yes, I'll echo Callie's sentiment first of just thank you to Postscript for having us here today. Super stoked to talk about some of this strategy stuff with all of you. So I started using Postscript in what I think is like the early days of SMS marketing in summer of 2020. So back then there was a lot of testing as there still is, but it was a much newer platform, a new method of communication for e-commerce clients that I work with. 
talking with their customers and subscribers. And even back then, I've thought of text message marketing as a much more intimate way to speak with customers. So that framework of thinking hasn't changed much for me over the last few years. I still think of texting with customers as a privilege and a strategy that should be treated as such. But I feel like what's evolved over time is all that has become possible in the world of text message marketing. And I think a specific example that stands out to me when I think about what we're doing now versus a few years ago is two-way communication. And we'll talk a little bit about that today because we do that a lot with Graza. Um, but having those tactics in our toolkit and shout out to Postscript for making it possible to do that. But super exciting to see the evolution of text message marketing and tapping into the abilities, the different kind of abilities that we have to communicate with our subscribers. Awesome, Rose. Yeah, that is really great. And I echo what you said, and that's a privilege. And 2020 is very early. Um, so you were on the cutting edge there for SMS. Kelly, I just had my colleague throw up on the slide some recent examples of how your subscribers have engaged with Graza. Obviously, I have a very cute dog. I love seeing cute dogs in text messages. But for the people here who are listening, saying like, this is really cute, engaging. I just don't know if it's right for me or my brand. What's your comment there? How would you react to that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is such fun stuff. It's so nice to see it up on the screen. Um, I think I would say to that, uh, if someone who is a little bit hesitant to try out that strategy, I think I would say like, you know, what What the heck do you have to lose? Um, I think first and, and foremost, as Rose mentioned, like it's so important to look at um, text message marketing as a testing ground to get real-time feedback on what your community and customers find engaging. So if you try a few texts that lean more, you know, surprise and delight-esque and your community is like, what the heck is this? Um, you can always pivot and say like, okay, this, you know, this isn't for us and and go back to whatever you were doing before. So I would really encourage brands to just try it, even if it's just one text message out of, you know, eight that you're sending per month um, and see if it drives engagement because you just never really know until you try. Um, that said, I'm not going to say that every brand should take the exact same approach as Graza or, or adopt the exact same strategy because I can definitely think of brands for whom like that exact strategy simply wouldn't work. Um, so I think it's really about taking a closer look at your brand's tone, your voice, um, your brand's core values, and figuring out how to maybe just be a little bit more playful or inject a little bit more personality into it. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about going all out and being overly weird or overly, uh, you know, like completely pivoting your personality in a way that feels off brand. I think it's really just about being human and sounding human um, and making your community feel like they're interacting with a human versus a brand that's trying to sell them something. Because I think um, most of us can say from firsthand experience that we would much rather be texting with a fellow human than a brand that's trying to sell us something. Um, so I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone here, but I unsubscribe very quickly when a brand starts getting overly salesy. So I think it's really all about trying to figure out how to strike the right balance, which I think can be very challenging at times. Um, you know, that's also not to say that no one unsubscribes from our texts, but like when they do, I'm kind of like, oh, you, you know, you didn't enjoy this photo of the cutest dog ever. Like that, that's on you. Like that's not, that's not on us. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. I would be offended if somebody unsubscribed from a photo of my dog. Um, I'm curious. I think one thing you called out and I want to echo is like SMS is a really distinct channel and people do have to very explicitly opt in to SMS. You cannot do it by accident. So I'm curious for you, as you think about email and SMS, people often compare the two channels, see them as, you know, whatever you send on email for sure should go over SMS. But how do you see those two channels and how do you differentiate your strategy on email and SMS differently? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I think for us, we really try to view 
each channel as its own like unique outlet to communicate a particular message like within a much bigger brand ecosystem. So when we're building out our marketing calendar for the month or for the quarter, we don't start with a channel first approach. We start by laying out all the brand initiatives that we're working on, all the product launches or partnerships that are on the roadmap, um, all the moments that are seasonally or culturally relevant for us. Um, and then we build a very holistic marketing plan that's inclusive of all channels. So email, SMS, social, influencer, IRL, uh, you get it. Um, so once we've got that holistic marketing plan built out, we start to drill down and think about how best to tailor each marketing message to each specific channel. So this means asking you know, ourselves questions like what's the best way to communicate this particular initiative via SMS? Or how do we think our SMS audience will respond if we frame this like that? Um, and understanding that we may need to frame things differently to our email and SMS audiences in order to communicate the exact same message. Um, and then, you know, despite those differences in, in tone or format or whatever, we think about how each channel is really working in tandem as part of this bigger brand ecosystem to communicate whatever we're trying to communicate, to engage directly with our community, um, and to ultimately get people to buy Margaraza, whether we're doing that explicitly or a bit more sneakily. Um, I don't know if that's a word. I may have just made that up. But I think it's really all about playing to the strengths of each channel and understanding how your community and customers respond and engage on that particular channel. Um, sometimes I think it can be helpful to even view it as like an Instagram versus TikTok comparison where it's like, um, you're probably going to communicate the exact same brand moment or product launch very differently on each of those channels because you know that you have to optimize for engagement with a different format and algorithm and audience in mind. Um, but at the end of the day, both Instagram and TikTok probably play a very critical role for your brand. And it's really important to figure out how to squeeze the most juice out of each platform. So we really think about taking that same approach when thinking about email versus SMS. Awesome, Kelly, that's great. I love that you also just chatted about not just email, but TikTok, Instagram, et cetera, and how all those strategies are intertwined. Um, curious, a question for both of you, and Rose, I'll let you answer first, but if you had a friend or colleague who works for a different brand who says, hey, I'm ready to take that first step in moving away from just sending you know, the coupon cannon or sending just campaigns about new product launches or Black Friday sales, what would you say is like the best first approach to get started doing things that are more engaging? I always tell them that the easiest way to know is to ask your own community. And I think a really tactical way of doing that is simply to take a little small sample of your loyal customers. In this case, let's say it's folks who have a recurring subscription order. They're big fans of your product. Send them a text, ask them what type of content is valuable to them, and also what kind of interactions they genuinely want to have via text message. The caveat here is I'm definitely a firm believer in the importance of rewarding your community when they put in time or effort to help your brand. So definitely make sure they're getting something in return for the suggestions and ideas that they would be sending you. But then you could use your text message marketing platform to have honest conversations with those customers. Take a few of those ideas and then put them to the test with larger groups of your subscribers. So you're not just kind of guessing what they want, but you're actually using that information to test out these ideas. And another piece of advice that I would give is don't limit yourself to methodology that you've only seen other brands do. We've talked a little bit about this thus far, but be willing to try something different and also accept that not every idea is going to stick. That's okay. But you can workshop or add on or modify based on what the data is telling you. And for, for a more specific idea, so people can kind of start getting their brains moving Let's say you're sending out five campaigns a month to your SMS subscribers. 
you could start by making an effort to ensure that at least one of those campaigns isn't conversion focused. So your call to action isn't asking them to buy your product, but rather it's what we call a non-transactional value campaign. So you're giving your community value in another form outside of just pushing your product. So this should be based on your unique subscriber base and what their interests are. So there's a little bit of that connection between them and your brand and your product. So for Graza, it could look something like recipe ideas or cookbook giveaways, but also that can be expanded to whatever kind of interest group your, your brand touches. So perhaps book recommendations based on what your staff is currently reading or a travel guide to destinations that have been popular recently or podcast episodes that your subscribers can listen to on their nightly walk, journal prompts, things that, that again, are this non-transactional value that are bringing some sort of what we call Graza surprise and delight to your subscribers' lives that's not focused on simply pushing the product and asking them to buy. And options are truly endless there. So I always encourage folks to get as creative as possible to see what sticks. Rose, I love that. I love talking about the value that you can bring to subscribers. I know that Graza has a cult following, not just at Postgre, but I've seen recipes Graza shared in our cooking channel on Slack, things like that. So um, people are talking about Graza a lot, I know, here at Postscript and in many places. Callie, I'd love to turn it over to you, though. Aside from what Rose said, anything else that you would want to add to um, getting started on promotional engaging text messages? Yeah, I think Rose really hit the nail on the head. So I will mostly just echo everything she said. Um, I personally really love the idea of selecting, you know, one out of five campaigns and just using it as a as a fun little test to start experimenting and just figure out and see what sticks. Um, one thing that I will add or, or kind of stress is, is just the importance of really digging deep to explore, you know, all the different ways that you can add value as a brand to Rose's point, um, because there are so many different avenues to do that beyond just a giveaway or a physical reward. Um, you can, you know, provide content that's educational, content that's entertaining, content that just makes your customers or community unexpectedly smile in the middle of their day. Um, so it doesn't always need to be something big or crazy or like way out of the ordinary. I think it's really all about these little um, gestures and moments that a remind your community that there are real, that there are real people behind the screen um, and B, you know, give them reasons to want to interact with you because they feel like they're getting something out of it. Um, so I would really encourage people also to Rose's point about just like getting creative. Um, I would really encourage people to follow whatever random ideas pop into your head um, because 90 eight percent of the time I think they'll lead you in the right direction um so many of my favorite campaigns that we've done have you know come from like shower thoughts that either I've had or, or someone on the team has had um and not necessarily these you know big formal brainstorming sessions so I would just really encourage folks to to follow your your random instincts and and thoughts when they pop up Kelly, so true. I think some of my best thoughts have been ones that have come from the shower. But um, before we continue on, I'm going to throw it over to my colleague, Ren, for a quick commercial break. Can you guys see me? <laughs> what do uh, Avi, Kapari, oh, cat, get out of here, and Graza have in common? Well, I had a little difficulty pronouncing all of them. But in addition to that, they all leverage Stay AI for their subscription programs. Now, folks, who doesn't love a subscription? I, for example, have a subscription to friendships. Every 30 days, my one friend just vanishes and says something along the lines of, thank God that's over, and a new one comes in for the next month. My mom signed me up, uh, and it's been really nice. Stay AI helps you build the perfect subscription program across your product catalog with flexible billing schedules, shipping plans, discounts, and easy out-of-the-box management. 
Stay AI is built to scale with your business and be your standalone service for anything and everything subscription. So start vibing and subscribing with Stay AI. Back to y'all. Awesome. Thanks, Ren, and thanks to the Stay AI team for sponsoring this episode. I know that I'm a big fan of the work they do, and so are many of our clients. Um, shifting gears a little bit, though, and Callie, I'd love to throw this question over to you. There is a lot more SMS adoption as an exclusive channel and arguably a more engaging channel than maybe email, social media, TikTok, since you can text back and forth directly with customers and really create that personal relationship. But a lot of brands are just really only focused on ROI, things like that. What are your thoughts there? Is your intent to always be selling on SMS? Does it go deeper than that? What are maybe some other ways you're measuring the channel? Yeah, I I think it's a given um, from, you know, the rest of, of our conversation, what my answer is, is going to be here. Um, but for Graza, I, you know, the intent is way less about selling and way more about forming an emotional connection to our SMS community. Um, our strategy, I think, has proven that if you can nail that, and nail that emotional connection and engagement, the rest will follow. So it's almost like we're thinking of revenue as like a byproduct of engagement and not the other way around and, and not revenue first. Um, and I really think and, and hope that we'll continue to see that approach pay off and continue to pay dividends over time. Um, I would really also encourage other marketers to think about that like return on investment as more than just revenue and instead think about engagement as a return on investment. Um, think about genuine relationship building as a return on investment because those are the kinds of things that are going to drive true brand loyalty at the end of the day and really create a community of advocates who are going to feel compelled to refer your brand and product to their own friends. Kelly, that's so true. I tell even my non-marketing friends about Graza and some of the things they that you guys share. And so I think that is just so invaluable, the word of mouth approach that's coming from so many of your out of the box ideas. Um, in terms of specific metrics, though, how does the Graza team really measure the success of a campaign outside of ROI? Yeah, you know, we're obviously looking at conversions still and, and earnings per message, um, but really keep a, a very close eye on click through rate as a metric for engagement um, and also on subscribe rate just to see if people are turned off by anything that we're sending them. And I think to really help us strike that balance between being a little bit salesy, but also being, you know, a little bit wacky and, and out of the box. Um, I would say conversion and clicks are probably the top two metrics that we look at to measure the success of a campaign. Um, but then, of course, outside of metrics, we're looking very closely at all the responses that we get to our messages, which I know is just thrown up on the screen. I don't know if it's still up there, but we have an awesome community manager. Um, big shout out to Talia if she's tuning in. Um, but she really tries to respond to every single text message re that response that we get, which is a lot of text messages. So huge kudos to her um, for, you know, for example, the, the Chester dog campaign that I know was pulled up earlier. Uh, we had like, I kid you not, uh, dozens of people respond with photos of their own dog, which, which you can see here. And all metrics aside, like that to me is the biggest sign of a really successful text campaign. Like people sending photos of their dog to an olive oil company, like that's incredible. Um, so I will I will also add that that campaign drove pretty significant revenue for us, um, comparable to and maybe even above true conversion focused campaigns that we've sent in the past, um, even though there was no CTA or link to click. Um, there was also a response that was pulled up earlier that was sent in uh, response to this text. Someone replied, this is great marketing. Please send me a link to buy some Graza. Um, and so I just think that that really serves to back up our theory that if you focus on driving engagement and really striking the right emotional cord, the revenue and everything else that you're looking for will really follow suit. 
Kelly, you touched on two of my favorite things there. One, click-through rate, I think is currently my favorite metric to be looking at. I tell it to all of the merchants I work with, but the dog content really hits. And I think my dog could sell any product and Chester clearly <laughs> is doing a great job. Rose, would be curious to ask you though, I know obviously SMS is a retention channel. Retention is always on the top of mind for merchants. Can you tell me some of your biggest retention specific wins for SMS and how do you keep retention high with your subscriber list? Yes, my favorite topic to talk about within this the, the world of SMS marketing is segmentation and how important and crucial it is for retaining SMS subscribers. And within that, the importance of thinking strategically about who you're sending to and also who you are not sending to. So the folks you're excluding from campaigns. And that relates a lot to the points we were talking about a bit earlier about the personal nature of text message marketing, right? Proper segmentation is necessary if you want to really find the right cadence of messaging with your community and find that balance between maintaining that connection, but also not annoying your subscribers to the point of unsubscribing. So the way that we do this with Graza is monthly content planning, which Callie talked a bit about earlier, our, our approach to that, but it really helps us accomplish the segmentation piece, right? Each month, Callie and I work collaboratively to build out what content we're sharing with the Graza community and also on which retention marketing channel we're using, email, SMS, and then the larger Graza team on their other channels as well. We also talk about when we're sending campaigns and my favorite part, who we're sending those messages to. So if you're able to look at that monthly view, that gives you the opportunity to see the frequency at which our subscriber segments are receiving communication from Graza. So we're going to be messaging at a different cadence to past purchasers of Graza versus brand new SMS subscribers that are still kind of in that exploratory educational stage of figuring out what the heck Graza even is. And we're also going to be talking differently to those who maybe are in the middle. They have they know about Graza, but they've been poking about around on the website, but they haven't ordered in a while, or maybe they haven't ordered just quite yet. So if you want to retain your SMS subscribers and grow your community, I think one of the most helpful things to lean into is strategic segmentation and that cohesive monthly content planning. Those two are like absolute non-negotiables for me. Awesome, Rose. Thank you so much for sharing. Callie, for you, in terms of engagement, when you're sending out one of these out-of-the-box texts, like a knock-knock joke or a random Spotify playlist, what does engagement look like? Have you ever gotten a response that's like way different than what you maybe expected? Yeah, I think the, resp the responses are usually pretty epic, as you guys have seen. Um, and it just continues to amaze me. Um, we've, you know, had thousands of people respond with answers, both correct and very incorrect, uh, to our like dumb jokes that we send out. Um, we've had tons of people, as you've seen, send in photos of their dogs and send photos of like what they're eating for lunch. Um, so I think like at this point, our team has come to expect this really incredible response. Um, and if it were to ever stop, I'd be a little bit worried. Um, but that said, even though it's expected, I it, it really never ceases to make any of us smile and laugh. Um, I'm always cracking up when I read these. And I just think it's so incredible that people like feel like they want to engage and, and interact with an olive oil brand in this way. So um, I just really think end of the day, it's such a powerful testament to everything that we've been chatting about. Absolutely. I totally agree. I, I look forward to reading the responses that come in on Postgood from Gaza. There's definitely some very fun ones and you always see some cute dogs. Um, well, we have time for a handful of questions from the audience. I know they've been super engaged, been trying to read the chat, things like that. People are stoked, but I'm going to ask a few questions to you both um, from the audience. So this one's from Amanda and she says she'd love to hear about your content planning sessions and what this looks like. How far out are you all planning? Rose, I know you touched on this a little bit. Do you mind maybe adding to that? And then Kelly, if you have anything to add. Sure. Yeah, definitely. 
we like to plan as far as it as in advance as possible and also balance that out knowing that we want to stay relevant we want to be able to respond to maybe things that are going on in kind of the larger cultural sphere or be able to pivot if we need to if something comes up that we want to talk about or push out to our to our SMS subscribers what that looks like internally for us is we're usually working about a month ahead uh, to make sure that we know what's coming down the pipeline for the following month so right now what are we at 21st of September so last week we finalized everything that we're doing for October but on the grander scheme of things we started talking about Q4 in August of this year. So we try to get a little bit of a larger view on what we're doing for the quarter much earlier. And then we can drill down what each month looks like. So again, like around the 10th or the 15th of the month prior, we're trying to finalize content for the following month. And that allows us to make sure everything that we want to communicate is kind of coming out the way that we've planned it. So I'd encourage folks to set those internal deadlines of planning monthly content, but also think about it on a quarterly basis as well. And I know we're, we're all focused on Q4 right now, but that's super important for us to kick off in, in August or September. I'll, I'll add to that as well, that like in order for us to be, you know, like meeting these deadlines that we're setting with Rose and the Fat Earth team, um, we are having these like internal content brainstorming sessions, even, you know, weeks and months before Rose and I sit down in the line on the upcoming kind of monthly calendar. So we're, we're working really far ahead, which I think is tough, especially for a brand that, you know, we have so many things going on kind of at all times. And I think it can be tough sometimes when, you know, you have things come up and things change and, and shift. And so it's like trying to, to stick to those like, timelines that we're setting for ourselves, but also giving us a little bit of flexibility in realizing that some things need to change, we may need to, to shift and um, pivot in certain ways. So we're, we're working really far out in advance here, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, I love that you you chatted about, you know, having the ability to change, you know, you never know what's going to happen in pop culture or things like that. And being able to slide in a campaign that's super relevant on text and things like that is super important. Yeah. So I'm grateful that you guys balance both, you know, playing ahead while still being nimble there. Um, I think we have a few more audience questions. So this one comes in from Jane and it says, do you always send with pictures? How does it compare with text? only SMS? Do you think there's better deliverability, revenue? Rose, do you want to start off with this one? Yeah, we've done a bunch of A-B testing around this. And honestly, with the Graza audience, we don't have super clear data that shows us like, yes, every time we use a photo, we know we're going to get better engagement or conversions. Or if we don't, we know that's going to drop off. So what we've tended to do is just really closely align it with thinking like a human like what is the content that we're sending out to our subscribers and would a photo help them kind of understand or get the vibe better and like is it like this value add right that we can add is it something fun like with Chester the dog or like a cute little playlist illustration so it's very specific to the content and how we feel our audience is going to receive that yeah I think a lot of times it's like, obviously there are some campaigns we send out, like we wouldn't send a photo of a dog without sending a photo of a, of a dog. But um, a lot of times, like I think we've been surprised by how well like text only messages perform. And I think that also just really speaks to Rose's point about like being human. And like every time you text a friend, like there's probably not a photo attached to it. So really trying to make it feel human and, and like we are texting as someone's friend, not just as a brand. Yeah, Kelly, that's so true. And I think you spoke about click-through rate earlier. Sometimes I think the shorter ones that almost leave something to be desired, like, yeah. you know, a little bit of a sneak peek without being too clickbaity, actually drive a ton of success, especially in the click-through rate realm. So um, okay. I believe we have time for one more question. So this one is from Ruby. And Ruby wants to know, what is your favorite post-purchase automation within your SMS channel and why? Oh God, Rose, I'm like blinking. I can, yeah, I can. Those purchases okay. are. <laughs> I'm happy to hop in. I have all these. 
recorded to memory, so it's all good. <laughs> um, my 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 favorite post purchase. Uh, post-purchase automations in our account with Graza is the way that we're chatting with our subscription customers, right? So those, that, that group of people, all of our SMS subscribers, all of our Grazoids, as we call them, are super important. But the ones that have recurring Graza subscriptions, they're getting olive oil delivered to them on, you know, monthly, every other month basis. We make sure that they know how special they are to us. They're our biggest fans. So we have a lot of automations live in our PostScript account that connect to Stay AI. And I think it's really, really important to think about how you can level up that communication with those folks that have recurring subscriptions to your product. If you don't offer subscriptions, just think about your VIPs and the folks who have ordered a few times, really making sure that they feel like they have individual attention and they're appreciated by the brand because they are some of your biggest ambassadors. So those are the ones that are my favorite that we have in, in the PostScript account is making sure that they're communicated with really clearly. They know kind of their options for subscriptions and that we're making it easy for them to manage their subscriptions and um, ensuring that they know SMS is a channel that they can talk to us on because like I said, they're some of our most valuable community members. I will also say that we just started rolling out some really fun perks and goodies for our um, Graza subscribers. So um, quick little sales pitch. I know I, this is all about not being salesy, but uh, if you are not a Graza subscriber, part of our subscription program, you should get on it because we're rolling out some, some pretty cool stuff. So quick little sales plug. <laughs> Kelly, well, that's great. We talked about providing good content in order to sell, and you have done nothing but that in the last 40 minutes or so. Um, well, I think that that is our final question there. Thank you both so much for participating, and I'm just so inspired by the work that you guys both do and, and grateful to work with you both on a regular basis. And um, again, just want to say a quick thanks again to Stay AI. I swear that last text um, question was not a plant. It's just the, the true answer there. There, but super appreciative of them and a great subscription platform. Um, next week, we actually have episode three. Um, my colleague Tyler and Kelly, who won SMS Marketer of the Year last year, are going to be chatting Death Wish Coffee. Um, so if you aren't signed up, make sure to go to postscript.io dot slash events to catch the next episode and then we have one final one here in a few weeks but thank you again both so much and if you have questions for rose or callie they're available on linkedin we'll make sure we can get to some of the questions in the chat that we didn't get to answer live but thank you both again so much for your time and we'll see you guys all next week thanks for having us <laughs>